the Dort Javerka Ork Cheese in 32 ACP. Let's check it out. The Verka Ort Gs has been a very popular firearm, even though it was only made from 1919 to 1924. And about 80,000 of these were made from the records that I can get. Uh, but these were very popular in the Americas, both north and south. And uh, if you go to your local gun shows, a lot of times you can find these or on Gun Broker. Just a really cool design from an age gone by. Now we're continuing our mouse gun series. This is in 32 ACP. And most of your self-defense experts agree that 380 ACP is really the lowest uh, caliber that you really need to depend on. Can 32 ACP be used as an effective self-defense round? Yes, it can. But you're really taking chances with the anemic round of the 32, 25, 22. Make sure the gun is unloaded. Now this is a blowback design. And that means that when the recoil occurs, it forces the, the slide to the rear position. Uh, actually the firing pin itself, and you can see that it's protruded a little bit, is the ejector. Uh, the extractor right here pulls it loose and then the firing pin throws it out the side. Uh, a very simple design and we're gonna break it down in just a minute and take more of a look at it. Uh, sights are very low profile, which go along with this pistol. I mean, every edge is rounded off. This is made for a small pocket or carry pistol. Uh, and of course, 32 ACP has been very popular, especially in Europe, for a long time. Of course, now, really, the 380 ACP has kind of taken its place. Uh, it is a striker fire pistol. There's a striker in here and just a very simple design. In fact, there are no tools needed to break the pistol completely down. And it was designed as such. Um, even taking the grips off, which the grips are really nice walnut grips. Uh, you can see the stylized D on here. The early models had a, an H and an O. And those were the original uh, Heinrich Orgies. Uh, this is the Dorcha Verka symbol and even though it's shaped as a D it's actually a cat and the head comes this way and the tail comes back around so I thought that was pretty cool uh, but these grips are really nice now you can see there are no screws and inside right here inside the magwell there's a little lever that you push with a object a, a sharp object or a screwdriver and it actually releases the grips one of the things you don't want to do is try to pry these grips loose and they do break if you do that. In fact, a lot of orgies you find will not have the original grips because people have tried to force the grips off. Now, one of the things about this pistol, when I bought it, it had, somebody had actually made some custom grips for it. And so I got on eBay, or Gun Broker actually, and I paid a $95 for these grips because I wanted them original. Uh, that is the price you have to pay for this. So be careful with those grips. And when you do take them off, just be really careful. The serrations on the slide here are enough to grab, but there's not really a whole lot going on. But the way they're angled, it's not too bad. Uh, as you can see, it's a really plain, smooth side. Uh, one of the things you will notice is this little button. And this is your grip safety release. Uh, this is your safety for the gun. And when you press in to fire, now you're on fire. You've released the safety. Uh, then to get back to that, even when you finish firing and let go, this is depressed. So you have to push this little small button and it brings back the grip safety. To me this is very reminiscent of the Browning 1910 because of its shape. And really a lot of the design features are the same. Uh, Heinrich Ortgies actually started out in Belgium 
and then moved back to Germany uh, and moved his factory there. And after one year of being in business, he passed away. And so Deutsche Werke moved the facility, or at least their headquarters were in Berlin, Germany, and they began to make these. There is a lot of different slide markings. In fact, there's, they call them slide addresses. And there's at least, I believe there's at least six different uh, slide configurations. Some have markings here and on both sides, but on this one you can see this is a late model and there are no slide markings. There is an N right here for nitro, it's German proof marks. And uh, really it's a very clean pistol. There's not a lot of markings on here. And then of course right here it has uh, the serial number and Germany. These were made in 32 ACP, 380 ACP, and 25 ACP. Uh, actually the original pistols were in 32 and 380 and then from there uh, two years, uh, in fact in 1921, they began to make the 25 ACP. Uh, what's really funny about this pistol is that the barrel is, you can remove the barrel. Uh, this is 32. You can put a 380 barrel on here and use the exact same magazines from the original Orgies. Now, most of the Orgies were made with a blue finish. In fact, very few were made in the nickel. Uh, I'm not 100% positive that this is original, even though it's a really clean finish and the engraving here is really sharp, even looking at it under magnification. Uh, so I'm not positive, but this gun, whoever did a refinished job on this, if that's what's happened, did an excellent job on it. According to condition, you know, you could pay from $300 to up to $500 for these pistols. So, you know, even in 25 ACP, they seem to be bringing a fairly good premium. Uh, I did a review on the 25 ACP. It was a blued model. It is an excellent little gun. Uh, one of the things about this pistol uh, at the range was I had a couple of hiccups right at first and then none. Uh, then one thing that I did have was the extractor pin right here started to inch its way up and I'd have to just push it down. So I'm going to have that uh, somehow staked to make sure that uh, that's not coming out. Uh, one of the things you don't want to do also is dry fire this pistol. Uh, the, the firing pins are fairly hard to come by with a lot of these type pistols and so dry firing it really adds stress to the firing pin. Now at the range this was a real pleasure to shoot. 32 ACP is not a lot of recoil. Uh, a little bit more of course than your 25, definitely less than your 380. And uh, it's just a really soft shooting little pistol. Uh, if you have really large hands though, there are reports where you might get a little slide bite or a little slide rub uh, when you're bringing up because the gun does come way up and it meets with the slide right here. Uh, I didn't experience any of that, but I have you know pretty medium hands, so that's not usually a problem. Uh, the uh, sights, of course, as we've talked about, are really anemic. I mean, they are tiny and uh, hard to see. Uh, there must have been aftermarket or adjustable sights on the target models when these were used uh, for competitive purposes. Even though it's fine for self-defense, was not spot on. Uh, and really, I think a lot of it had to do with the sights. Now I have 25 ACP, 32 ACP, 380 ACP, which all three of these were designed by John Browning, and then we have the 9mm Parabellum. This is actually the 380 is really called in Europe the 9mm Kurtzed or Short. Now when purchasing ammo, sometimes the 32 ACP can be listed 7.65mm Browning, and again 32 Auto. Here we have the 6.35 Browning, which is 25 ACP. Uh, this ammunition can be sometimes a little more difficult to find than 380 or 9 millimeter or other calibers. Uh, but it is out there, and I've seen a number of different ones, a lot of times even self-defense loads. The magazine capacity is 8 plus 1, and the magazines themselves are really nice. The, the finish on here is really slick, uh, and it is a nickel finish whether the gun was in blue or in nickel. Uh, again, there were very few of the nickel pistols made. Uh, one of the things that's pretty cool, though, is the buddy of mine who found this, he actually found it in a gun store, called me because uh, he knew I really liked these pistols. And I only paid $200 for this pistol. Uh, it did, again, have those customized grips on it. Now, he has a blued model, and the grips were broken. 
so I sent him the, the grips that were on here and then again purchased these for this pistol just because I like the original look to it um, and it is a really fine looking pistol now here I have one of the 25 ACP models a lot smaller it is in the blued finish uh, this is a really beautiful gun in my opinion I really love the the finish in the old style old world craftsmanship uh, it held seven in one and again these were made a couple of years after the 32 and the 380s were made uh, but just a really fine little small pistol you see actually more of these on gun broker than you do of the 32s and definitely uh, a lot more than the 380s they're pretty hard to come by uh, there's a lot of rough ones out there as well so you need to really watch if you're looking for one of these and I did a full review on the 25 I'll have it linked right here as an annotation and down in the description uh, a little bit more information about this pistol the length of the pistol is six and three eighths it's four inches in height and it's about three quarter inches in width a very slim trim handgun of course the grips are going to actually make it come out just a little bit but really a perfect pocket pistol. But compared to the 25 ACP, it's quite a bit larger. But yet, they're like twins. <laughs> now we're going to disassemble the firearm. I've got the magazine removed to check to make sure the chamber is empty. Uh, first thing you do is press and leave out your grip safety. And you need to leave it out while you're disassembling, which can be a little bit of a chore because you want to grip it this way. Hold down on that little button, pull back on the slide and lift up and then it comes right off uh, recoil spring of course over the barrel and has the fixed barrel design which means that it is a blowback design uh, the barrel taking it counterclockwise you can turn this and actually remove the barrel uh, this one's on pretty tight and even attempted to do it but it just really wasn't coming off and I decided not to force it because of the age of this pistol I mean this pistol is almost a hundred years old and yet it's still in really great shooting shape. Right here we have the striker and very simple plain design. Now see I've already depressed the grip safety and if you do you can press that button and pull back on this little lever and that brings it back out because you're going to need to have it that way when you reassemble. But that's all you really need to do to field strip the handgun. When reassembling the handgun I would suggest having some sort of punch or some sort of long object and I'll show you that in a second. Leaving the grip safety in place, go ahead and slide over your recoil spring, bring your barrel in, and just push it through the slide like that. Now I've already deployed the grip safety, so I've got to press and get that little lever to the back position. And that's going to allow for your firing pin to be able to go in correctly. When you get it down into place, the firing pin will be protruding out somewhat. Just push it down and then just close the slide. There we go. Actually, I was able to get it in even with the grip safety depressed. Just double check to make sure that it comes back out. And the firing pin works. You need to make sure and check that uh, once you reassemble the pistol. It's really neat to be able to go back and check out these vintage, older designs that still have superior craftsmanship and still function today just like they did back in the 1920s. A really classic firearm and something that really has led to what we today enjoy in, the, in our modern firearms. So the Deutsche Werke Orgies in 32 ACP, thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. And it was made for that reason. I mean, and it was made on purpose for that. And it was it was and it was designed. Now this is a nickel slide. Now this is a nickel pistol. Really, really effective and really should be used. And really thing we really want to look at. Really, a really long history. Really popular. Really cool from the first of the 19th.